Great to be back with you. It's the Crypto Sniper. Yes, do us a favor. Hit the Puppy Licks button right now. As you see it, bang. The Puppy Lick, yes, lick the face of the Awakening Crypto Sniper who's talking to you uh, for the first time in a bit. Um, also, by the way, before I get started, we're looking at Bitcoin. We're going to be looking at a number of cryptos. We're going to talk why the case for defense has served you well from whence we started to see uh, this downside. And also, we're going to cover a number of alts uh, as well. Uh, we'll even take a, a drive-by Monero, uh, a drive-by shooting. Uh, and we will also uh, tell you why that macro cycles absolutely do dominate crypto cycles and people are more and more coming to realize this uh, and what the macro cycles are saying for crypto so there will be a certain amount of um, looking at related markets and what they're communicating in terms of everything right now so good hope you are uh, catching me loud and clear so what has been going on um, people got kind of excited at 46 they were like yeah wrong again um, and now you're having uh, a little bit of an off uh, that has been unpleasant and has seen us actually trade as low as 37,000, I believe, currently trading 37,922. Um, we highlighted this channel sell uh, and that this was indeed a break, uh, that you sat on the 42 key level of significance. This was a seminal uh, recent moment when you broke that. You couldn't hold it because it was a chance at one point you might have created a small continuation pattern and you could have continued staircasing to the upside. That has not been the case. We've continued to see weakness um, on uh, Bitcoin and the, this was broken impulsively. Remember, key levels of significance exist. They support, they usually just run. They, you pivot around them as well. So they are often the axis on a bit of a S price action like that. You see it, it goes through the middle. Um, people don't conceptually grasp this. We got a bit of that pivoting on the 47.5. Why was the 47.5? Well, if you've been following this channel, you'll know why we pivoted around that. It was a neckline of the last head and shoulders that we called um, and that we told you to then stay long afterwards. To the left, to the left, go over, look, we've covered it. Uh, and we get plenty wrong in between accurate calls. It's not about actually being right or wrong in crypto, my good people. It's about how much you lose when you're wrong and how much you make when you're right uh, and how often then that matters how often uh, you're right and wrong uh, and a highly rewarding trade mechanism that captures key moments where you can be super tight risk uh, and expansively long I could actually be right two times out of ten and be making money and the dude who's on YouTube and Twitter and everything is always right all of the time um, uh, is snatching five points, five pips, ten pips, thirty pips and then gets washed out for a major crash and his entire account gets cleaned because his stop loss is too deep or he doesn't have them or he never sets them or he was away. So remember that. Uh, you can. It's not about who's most often right. It's at the end of the day making money is what counts. Okay, so before I get into this Bitcoin deep dive uh, any further, I want to tell you something. There is a short window of opportunity. We are, will be doing uh, a, an event here in Panama, which is where I'm recording here today. And it'll be at our offices in uh, Panama. In fact, we'll also go up to the upper level where after the uh, first day, we'll have some drinks and some eats. There will also be... Um, um, meals, coffees and everything. It's going to be advanced HVF method. All trading metamorphosis program um, students that are coming on in the short window for the date of that event, which is mid-March, you'll get all the particulars um, when you go to our website to book a call and have a chat for some details. You will physically be able to come and see us. Uh, yes, travel can still happen. Good people. People are still moving around. Uh, in fact, in many countries, Boris Johnson has lifted uh, restrictions, etc., etc. Um, so you can come and see not only us, uh, the team, you can also meet your fellow students in physical person. If you can't and you're not up for traveling, but you're a recent tr trading metamorphosis program uh, joiner, um, you will have it streamed to you wherever you are so, um, and you will still be able to ask questions. We'll have our facilitator guy. This is going to be just on our advanced theory. So all our existing um, TMPs will also, of course, getting that uh, latest best thinking um, specially recorded, specially presented live and guys in the room, meet your community, etc, etc. By the way, we also do amazing reset services for which Panama is a great second reason for you to come. I'm not going to get into that uh, here. 
email at support at the market sniper.com just to find out why uh, you could be keeping so much more of your money so this is about Bitcoin and the crypto market so uh, let's get on it the this rare window of opportunity where you can actually have a physical event because all our content is hosted online very professionally recorded studio level recorded uh, and we interact in our community and everything is done virtually we pivoted that way thankfully before COVID there I said the, the, the thing that may not be mentioned um, but uh, it's great to be able to do something and have something physical and this will be the first time I think since 2018 um, anyway Bitcoin this structure gentlemen and lovely ladies the loveliest of ladies that put up with my cheeky sense of humor um, we love to have you as well crypto traders this is not good price behavior for bottoming and we've cons we've regularly said guys we've regularly said you had that huge spiller we didn't like the structure we warned you about that that you should be practicing defense uh, over here we also warned even at this point that this was skiddy stuff and that you're in a bit of a channel there was concern about the rising uh, wedge uh, over there and that break so you got a lot of warnings that this was starting to get a little bit iffy and sketchy um, and you know you could have at the latest you could have got out somewhere in the, the 50s so we've been saying safely from the 50s and potentially even before that you should be uh, practicing defense you're sitting at 37.7 at the moment this price behavior is not solid how does this become bullish you all have a bull bias and bias 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 or oh. Oh, Mr. Sean Connery has entered the room. Sit down there, my lovely ladies. Uh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, we'll try to get that one back under control. Bias. You all have an inherent bull bias. Um, and what you want to know is uh, you don't like news that tells you things could be getting sketchy for you. Uh, and we all have an inherent resentment of the guy that tells us what we don't want to hear. And we have this itch. The obstacle is the way. The discomfort is the growth path. That is what you must see. You must have that guy in the room, whatever you're doing, that says it doesn't look great. Uh, when you think it's, you don't want to hear it, but there's something worrying you. That is the manifestation of an inherent instinct that is cautioning you. There's not too many ways this corrects without uh, uh, some further bearishness. One of the ways that it could fix itself a little bit is if it came into this range, Bitcoin, into the 34,850 maybe, somewhere it could even go a little lower, maybe the 32 mids, and then does a hard snapback and come somewhere in and around the 46. You'd want it to be hard, you wouldn't want it to be too lame, you don't want this, because that's more likely to potentially set up further downside continuation and you end up with something like that um, so what you would want to have instead of that and that's requiring quite a bit flush out another flush out weekends flush out slowly flush out all the people that are panicked and sold you've had a couple of those already uh, in terms of the downside flush them out and then uh, head back up uh, interact a little bit with the 42 at such a key level maybe get back up and then ghost touch in and around the 45s uh, and then maybe a little bit of a rest then you could have a W bottom so that's how this could fix so we're not calling a bear there are ways that this can get better but most of them would probably require a little bit more uh, downside there are many many bull structures that come straight out of here um, generally speaking we refer to this as a megaphone it's an ascending megaphone we teach you about broadening structures it's in our program you could be taking a sunny trip and seeing all the ships queued up all that supply chain block blocking up there I'm sitting with my goggles and I'm watching my Amazon goods coming in there uh, and they're moving fast uh, but anyway you could uh, be with us in the room you could uh, have access to the community before um, you could pop over and as I say that event is included in your program so it's a bonus event that you don't normally get which can be included you'll only have a uh, little little food surcharge and coffees that the guys will explain to you um, but of course you need to come or you can sit at home and have it streamed to you. Uh, so this is generally not pro positive price behavior. I'm sorry, you don't want to hear it. Uh, it isn't. Um, we can flip a few on to, we can flip this chart over. Um, a great believer in the inversions. We were looking at uh, gold and silver ratio, by the way. One of the many things we observe to be better at crypto in other words, we watch other markets to understand crypto better. Why? Because it isn't just the crypto cycles. 
big stuff happening in other markets makes a goddamn difference, especially once you have the institutions. You all want the institutions to come in and pump your bags, but you don't want them to be institutions when the stock market is selling off, this is happening, the bond market is collapsing, and you think, no, 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 we don't, you don't bring any of that shit with you. Of course they do. They manage their goddamn money as they see fit, and they categorize you as a high beta risk asset, and as a result, you get dumped, pumped, uh, according to when they are afraid and when they think it's a good time to be getting in and not. Uh, and you want that money to pump your bags? That's what you get. You get the rest of the world brought to you. You thought you were a bubble of pure, uh, pure freedom and liberty. And actually, you're finding out that you've become an assets class like any of the others. Digital assets. Um, anyway, enough of that. So that potential sell-off could see gold go up and silver less so, or gold and silver both going down. Your friends in anti fiatdom even though Peter Schiff loves to hate Bitcoin and other crypto kings love to hate gold and silver, uh, you should have both. Keep saying, don't have the fastest horse in the stable, have a full stable. Makes more sense. Um, but anyway, um, that's maybe just us. Let's have a look at that Bitcoin chart on the inverted. We taught you this technique and we continue to reiterate it. You should look at charts upside down. Would you be a buyer of that or would you be a seller in its current form? And I have to tell you, it's a, there's a worrying number of key levels of significance here at the 30K. Was a very key level. Was a very key level. 30,000. Yep. Let's go put pin the tail on the donkey, shall we? Oh, I actually quite like donkeys. They're such cool animals. I really I don't want to do them bad. We've got much worse in politics at the moment. Um, anyway, so yes, you did get a deeper dip here. That was your 69 high, remember? And now you have what's currently going on here. Now, um, you can spin it however you like, but this is not looking obviously downside. If you want to buy this chart, I wouldn't say I'm particularly strong either way, but there is uh, a real risk that this is going to um, be going to the uh, upside a little more, and you could create a continuation pattern for further upside. And there seems to be a fatal attraction to the 30K number that might want to see it revisited. Let's fix that. Uh, my OCD won't allow for any number but all the zeros. Um, so yeah, that's been a key, key uh, level of accumulation. Bitcoin 30K is a key, key level of accumulation. If we go out a little bit instead of the two daya and we look at this, that was the big first cup gold nugget. We told you this was going to be the best part of the trade in crypto. Yes, Crypto Sniper, hit the licks button if that's true. You saw the video. Um, this is going to be your best part of your game on the monthly chart. It looks so plain and simple, doesn't it? Um, yes, indeed, sir, it does. Uh, that was way back in 8, 9K uh, levels that that all started. And let's go back and have a look. Month is maybe a bit extreme. It's not uh, pivot to the weekly. Um, yeah. This is not helpful. This is not healthy, uh, generally. Are there other structures that we could draw mm, which don't involve straight lines? You could possibly let's make that a bit broader, a little bit more apparent. Um, are we at some form of this capping, descending line over here that could maybe keep a lid on it for a while? Um, you know, horizontal lines dominate angled ones. Let's get that absolutely clear. Um, grind line theory, again, something you can learn only from us, HVF method. Go and book a call, themarketsniper.com, uh, and get a free event included in your uh, ticket because you're doing, coming during this time. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't feel uh, super, super safe uh, on it uh, myself. Now, another key point, let's Leave inverted charts for a while because it's provoking all your autism. Let's pivot over to uh, Bitcoin dominance. I've got two charts for you on Bitcoin dominance. And I can say to you, my opinion is the real losers in this period while Bitcoin's been down has generally been alts. Um, because what we've actually seen is that uh, Bitcoin's gone down and the alts have gone down more so. Uh, generally. This is the BTC dominance uh, that we've been doing inside analysis that we've been doing inside the community for quite an extended period. And I can tell you that um, overall you want macro um, because most people, and, and let's, I'm going to break this really down super simply for you. 
I'm short and I've been making money non-stop. I've opened and closed the short trade. I've yet to have a losing trade because I have a bias to the short side and I'm patient and I have a fair amount of confidence. This is on a particular alt that I've given away to you once before. Go watch the legacy uh, videos. I'm not going to mention it again. Um, but uh, I can tell you, most people don't make crypto profits in bear markets. Most people net lose. They have tons of little favorite projects that they married to, that gave them a bit of money uh, once, and now they think they must stay true, loyal. There's an emotive reaction which is totally misplaced. Uh, you should, as we've suggested, be in defensives that stable uh, tokens. Your Bitcoin value has been climbing throughout this period. And unfortunately, this particular structure over here, what you need, because you don't make money in bear markets, you don't even make money in sideways markets, most of you, I'm afraid to say, because you're either hodling, which is probably the least damaging, um, but you can wear 80% losses, as you already know, 95% losses in the old markets, plus, plus, plus. Um, and this is a defensive season. It is far better to play preservation of capital. And you feel for every little movement up, you want to FOMO back in. This is it. This time it's for real. You're being Charlie Brown and Lucy keeps plucking the ball and you're ending up on your backside at tiny bit poorer for thinking that it's different. The macro cycle that we've warned over and over is dominating the crypto cycle. We originally, so I, I still get the comments by the way, you said Christmas turkey, or you said 84,000, whatever. Of course we did, yes we did. Put my hand up in the sky. We had a technical structure, there was a stop level, there was a target, and there was a get long time. And we said the pattern was far from perfect, and that's the level that it invalidates. None of those guys go and troll the likes of Max Kaiser, who said 250,000 by the end of the year, or even Raul or anybody else that had no justification, they're just throwing out big round numbers. We gave you a level, we gave you an invalidation point, and we had a, a target. That's what you got. We still get those haters. Things changed, the macro cycle dominated, suddenly debt started to spill, everything the fear is on, they were pulling back stimulus, inflation is the theme that suddenly dominated. We've warned on the market sniper, we were the first in April, and I, don't, I hate saying we, 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 uh, we're wrong on loads of stuff, but no one can take it away from us, the YouTubes are up there on the market sniper channel, that the co, uh, co the word that may not be mentioned, um, of March 2020 was indeed a pivotal in our opinion, trend change of eight on, on debt markets. And everyone was bonds long, bonds long, bonds long, only way is up, 40 year cycle, no sign of ending, keep on buying BTFD, uh, you name it. Anyway, so this performance on uh, Bitcoin market cap is going to be a problem for you. Until you start to get this down, most of you are going to lose money in crypto. Bad news alert. Spoiler. Until we have this do something like this, you guys are going to be losing money in crypto. A, because you're still hodling and you're not defensive. Those of you that are defensive will not be losing, um, but it could come down some other way, make a marginally lower low. We've had a series of marginally lower lows. This is highlighting a real concern. There is a potential for this chart to break this capping, descending, grind line, learn about grind line, grind line theory on www.themarketsniper.com, book a call, um, to break that upper line. And that will be Bitcoin being the chief dog, um, probably losing value, further value, to some degree, uh, and alts losing significantly more. That is the probable, most likely scenario of Bitcoin dominance breaking this uh, level here and it could be like that it could steepen um, as well that is the probable scenario what you need as net longs and hodls a lot of you you need this line along the bottom to break and the problem is every time it's broken it was a little bit of a, uh, a take in and then there was a rally a little bit of a take in and then there was an immediate rally and that is setting up what we call a falling wedge and in fact we talk about three three impulse falling wedge again learn more about that um, if you want to, if you want to become better if you want to become a fisher for yourself not a fish uh, beggar um, you can find out how to do it now at some point this 
probably turns. How far does it go? It could go all the way up to here before it comes off. It could make a new marginally low or fail to the, the next time. That's often what happens on the wedge structures. You can suddenly do no, no new low. And that will again apply more dominance for Bitcoin, again apply more bearishness generally and particularly for your favorite alts. So that's not particularly very good news. Um, so what you want right now, uh, most of you, because you only make money on a bull market uh, and when the market's going up, is for that to break down. Now, what you really need is to be more, have more dexterity to you in your trading and to protect your money in periods like this. In fact, it's a dull period. Who's having fun in the crypto markets right now? Let me tell you, ask anybody, 99%, most of them are not enjoying what is going on. And guess what? It's kind of like surrendering your life to just the 15% of the beautiful summer days in the middle of summer when it's not blowing, raining or everything else and all the other seasons you don't live and you wish. It's like working Monday to Friday and living for a weekend and every day you loathe giving the eight best hours of your awake life to a vile corporation that is uh, handing you a TG friendly manual on how to behave to all the new genders. Um, you need to learn to cope. You need to set yourself free from requiring one set of circumstances only before you actually do well. Um, so that Bitcoin dominance chart overall, it's a problem. Could there, are there other better ways it might come a little bit right? Well, you could, have, you could look, not all falling wedges only break to the upside, but it is a general tendency. It's a general tendency. Plus, we've been warning about deflationary strike events that we expect to have happen, among which the Russia bank hack is right up there. <laughs> and we talk more about this on our Reset channel and on the Market Sniper channel. But Reset on Odyssey is where you want to go and uh, subscribe. You should be buying gold and silver, by the way. Links below. You shouldn't only be in crypto. Guess what? It's been more stable there during these bad periods. Uh, and in fact, there's been a bit of upside for uh, gold. Um, so, okay. So that's the dominance assessment. Overall, this is a little bit of a dark cloud for you. And you should recognize this. All of these things point to a couple of reasons why the defense call that we got slated for, oh, you were bullish and now you're bearish, uh, actually not being a bad shout. Let's have a look at totals because this brings into perspective and in fact I'm going to start with total 2 um, and show you what I mean, why this has been. This, is, this was heaven on earth, your post March 2020 events, your breakout that came with uh, FCGN, first cup gold nuggets, that is the largest two and a half year continuation break to the upside from Bitcoin that gave you the best period to be leveraged long that most of you know how to do, uh, if there's one thing you know how to do, um, and I'm not insulting you, I'm not having a go, uh, we all do. Same for me. Um, and, but you can learn other things. You can learn other things. Uh, then we had uh, what was a half-time um, uh, oranges, which we said was a half-time oranges, we said accumulate here, and then that marginally higher high was a fatal event. It's on Bitcoin and it's on Ethereum, and it's on most of them. That is exhaustive behavior. And unfortunately, uh, the dollar came alive during this period, and King Fiat, and King Fiat, and now the game has changed, and these other cycles are having an effect on you. How does this one um, fix and go back to bullish? It needs to immediately find some support and go back up. Is that what it is implying currently? For me, on balance of probabilities, no. Worth my level of experience on balance of probabilities, accepting that I can be wrong and something can suddenly change all these principles and that we get things wrong regularly, uh, no. That is not a healthy overall candle. That is a broadening structure. This is a broadening structure. You're on a slide down. At some point, you will stop. The fact that it's broadening on the down says there will be an end to it. That means at some point, this line will be taken out. But that current structure there is no. And in very much the same way that I illustrated for Bitcoin, you need the, the earliest and fastest way would be to get a quick spill. And it's sometimes better to have the pain fast and ugly and to have a snapback rally and get a W bottom. 
That still means more pain to the downside. How do you just suddenly go up from here without any more pain to, to the downside? And I'd have to say, uh, I can't give you a typical technical scenario cost for that. That looks like that line is falling. That is called a basing ascending grind line. You will find out all about it later. And that I'd expect to have a uh, fall. Uh, be un understanding, it's not a trend line. It's not a trend line. People talk about trend lines, not a trend line. We've been in a macro bull trend. That was a pullback and that was a final uh, high that only made marginally higher high. This is a corrective. We're still in a macro bull in spite of this bad news, but this is a corrective and it could get worse. And in crypto, you can have correctives that go well beyond 50% um, and still be in a kind of illogical fashion with a log scale chart in the macro bull. But you don't have to wear 80 or 90%. Not wearing it and getting in much lower down is so much more easy gains in a, even just a simple hodl when things reflate again. Um, but there's real deflationary uh, threat. So a little bit on total two. How different is total three? Total three drops Ethereum from it. Very similar. Very similar. So, of course, the date, a large part, there's an overlap in the data there, but we've taken Ethereum and Bitcoin out and you're seeing the same thing. Okay, so that's a little bit of Bitcoin. Does it change when we compare Bitcoin against the Euro? Here's Bitcoin Euro. Because, in fairness, there was, to the start of the year, a lot of dollar strength. It has rested for a bit. By the way, our Euro-Swiss franc trade coming back into spilling again. The Eurozone will have problems. Now, already this draw that I did, has already uh, seen the slip out, broadening, ascending uh, megaphone on a bear pole. Uh, so you'll skid a little lower potentially. That doesn't mean you can't base out down here. Remember we highlighted the 30K or base out higher and have a reaction here, but it all remains to be seen and all the risk is potentially short term. And there's even plenty scope on the longer term for that deflationary event to not be too far away that we've been saying. Macro forces suggest defense. Hear what we said. Macro forces suggest defense is prudent. Um, so we've covered quite a bit in that with BTC dominance. Uh, I'll throw this one in. It'll enrage some and uh, it'll delight one or two followers that appreciate a bit of uh, updates. So over here, uh, in fact, let's do it on that one. Um, short update before we go on to the other alts. This, again, I've said the same about Richard Hart's uh, creation. This is not an attack on anyone as an individual or a person. This is a technical assessment. That was a break of a major first in a new trend, uh, overperformance trumpet. You can find out how we do those, what we do them and what's involved. You're broke, you have your return move and you're doing a bit of a convex man piece off the roof. This is equally, so for people that think their special token will be immune from all of these things and that uh, benevolent um, origin address is going to continue to throw money to keep your bags pumped. Um, I'm here to say big ass effects are big ass effects and they take effect and you will never be insulated especially as you get bigger uh, you will become more prone to the vagaries of the market. So uh, for my participation, as I say, I will uh, not be taking part in the mirroring, the, the snapshot uh, and all of those uh, aspects. It's better to lock in. I don't want to, I don't like this chart at all um, at the moment, but we called it in, uh, we did a uh, hex specific at 22 and it is also since lower since lower. Also, you've got uh, against WETH, which is Ethereum, also down. So what else uh, are we going to talk about? We'll show you a couple of the others. So we warned inside our community on, a, I think, a two-day time frame. No, it was a three. Uh, looking across, we said this crow is going to go down. These are small little counter trend rallies. We had two shooting stars. We called this inside our community. Um, occasionally after a small amount of time and my guys having the opportunity to do anything they want to do, we'll throw them out on Twitter. So don't forget to follow us on the Crypto Sniper. Um, but those two shooting stars spelled more downside. Tactical traders, I don't endorse this, but would sell the low and stop at the last high and you would have gone in and you've already made uh, a bigger reward than you've risked with further downside being potentially on hand. 
by the way. So we have a link below for the crypto.com card. Go and grab it. You can get up to 8%. It's awesome on buybacks, but you have to be staked in Crow. Um, you can start the process, but I wouldn't buy and stake the Crow now. I think you can buy the Crow cheaper later. Um, and who knows? It could come all the way down to here. Despite them sponsoring everything and its dog uh, in all expensive sports and otherwise. Um, pretty handy card otherwise to have. Great to get cash back. But you don't want to stake a token at 50 cents that becomes 19 cents because you paid for all that cash back and some. Uh, so bear it in mind, the link is below there. Get started. Don't buy it yet. The moment will come. Get your paperwork, get your setup, put your fiat in there. Uh, you could appreciate, and I was beneficial. I actually got a lot of this appreciation. There was a blow off to the upside. So um, you can still be smart. Don't be dumb. Um, so Ethereum. What about Ethereum? Let's talk about Ethereum. This is your crypto update. We're running you through a couple of things. Ah, I don't like that one. That's a bit busy. Uh, where did I draw Ethereum? Um, was it on this platform? Um, I've got so many chart draws. Um, Eth. Yeah. So this is Eth. Very similar to the total, what I've shown you here. This is a definite and definitive loss of momentum in crypto being illustrated. You know, a lot of upside continuations the whole way up. That was a nice last one. Then halftime oranges. Things started to get more choppy and volatile here. And that's where you are. That is an ugly candle. You went up, you got reversed back down. Let me tell you, in my opinion, it's followed through to the downside. It gets worse, I'm afraid, in at least the short term and possibly medium long if we have that big deflationary event. It's not worth wearing the elevator to the downside, guys. It's not worth, it's the difference between missing a major fall, the one of the highest values someone can give his community when giving trade guidance is not have them in the elevator when it smashes down 50 floors to the ground floor with a shudder. Because the capital that you receive, and you don't have to have got out at the penthouse on the top floor, floor 50, you could have got out on floor 31 and eaten quite a bit of red already down, but at least you get out. Uh, then when everyone else wears it down to the elevator, you can get back in on the ground floor and, and uh, catch up uh, a whole bunch. That is when your Bitcoin valuation, your Ethereum valuation, your whatever alt you like to measure it in valuation goes net up in those periods by avoiding the high vol crash. And volatility kills most retail traders. They go down in net value. And they know that, and the city knows that, the bankers know that, they are collecting your value because they know. Give them a bit of leverage, leave them to do what they do, they will blow themselves up. You just allow a little bit of time. Don't give them that satisfaction, preserve your wealth. We specialize, guys, we specialize in wealth creation, wealth protection. Build it, save it, spread it about, some physical, some in the ether and also very tax effective. Um, so Binance actually been probably one of the least bad in terms of overall uh, performance. But let me say this much. If the ship is going to spill, it's going to spill. And I can say to you, it will be affected uh, as well. And here you go, here you go, here you go. Don't like that structure at all. And I think you're actually having that spill right now. And you can see the degree of loss of momentum. So Ethereum made a higher high. Binance did not. This was half-time oranges for uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And of course, Binance got pulled down too. It never made a new high. It has held up a little better down here. But it had its reg issues, regulatory. They were chasing Binance, everything fiduciary and punishing them. So that was part of it. But now it's still going to uh, lose ground on this. This level, that line of increment is going to be a critical one. And you are knocking on that goddamn door right now. And if you break it, it's a spiller, a potential thriller all the way from, you guessed it, Manila. Um, so Seoul, uh, a lot of people are big fans of uh, Seoul. So are we terrible chart. That looks like a new low to the downside. Out, out, out. You've got to bounce real quick for that to hold. Is it looking like a bouncing environment right now? No, sir. How's Sol BTC done? That is not pretty. Sol dominance. Let's take you into that. Out of the three day on the daily. 
Not pretty at all. In fact, you have the possibility of a triggered head and shoulder on Sol for the dominance. Sol, the VCs could be uh, bailing. And don't forget, we, uh, we played this to the long side heavily. I'm not... Uh, I'm just so I'm talking about something that made us a lot of money at one point. That is a, a triggering event and a little bit of a return move flag, and you could have a spiller, an absolute thriller on your dominance chart, and you could be popping down there. Guess who's gaining that bulk of that dominance? <laughs> Tether, stablecoin, and Bitcoin. Not uh, too many others. One other actual that has gained, and we gave this one to you. It's not gained in dollar terms, it's gained dominance and its relative strength uh, has grown as well. So apart from stable coins and Bitcoin, one other, he skips ahead, that has gained in dominance is uh, XRP. And we've warned you that this, was, uh, this one was coming. In fact, let's have a little look at it here, XRP. Um, let's get it on this draw. Sorry for the background noise. There you go. We've warned that this was likely to resolve to the upside. I highlighted this inside our community. And even if you were following Twitter, you would have been notified by this. This is a big time frame. It's a uh, three day. Um, so it doesn't look like much. But you have crept to the upside. But it doesn't help you if you're not really making too much money. You're just losing less than everybody else. And that's kind of the story that it's been for Bitcoin. So actually, if you want dominance um, potential, you need to have a look uh, that dominance gain is the least bad if you're forced to hold crypto and you want and you suspect that I might in fact have some point and that there is a difficult time coming and you have to hold a certain amount. Say you're a fund. Um, these are your holds. You know, it'll be stable coin, obviously the best uh, if it's if we're accurate on the defensive. But if you have to hold some actual tokens, XRP um, and BTC are probably it. Um, by the way, even against BTC, you're a little bit up. You're a little bit up. Uh, but as I say, it's small pickings. It's not something I feel you need to do. How's it done in the dollar sense? Well, a busy chart, a um, little bit messy, uh, so much work. But this can sell off again, potentially. So uh, I'm, just not a, I'm just not a fan of holding crypto right now. Maybe you are seeing that. Um, there's one that one day uh, we possibly hope as much as we assess logically, dispassionately, with dispassionate eyes, but that has actually not done too badly. Um, I don't like Luna, by the way. It's not Luna that I'm talking about. Uh, this is all uh, broadening, but it has been relatively stronger. So this was a beast, an absolute beast, beast, beast. Uh, but you could wear a lot of downside um, on Luna if it's wrong. And I want to highlight a few things just while we're doing it, and that's not... Uh, the one I was going to talk to you about um, that, uh, that, I, that I was mentioning, Hope. Yeah, wow. I mean, it's done so well and there's so much scope for you to wear a lot downside, but it's actually been pretty good. But that was, what, 103 and you traded 43. You're at 53. You're still down 50% from all-time highs. Um, and the, the key part I want to highlight here is just switch this off on a normal level is again, you've been grinding up. We kept our guys out of chasing into this one and there was a lot of still upside that came because of this grinding up. But in the end, you got super blow off grinding up and then it came down hard. So that technically, you need to calm right the hell down, get low volatility, maybe have a little bit of a sell off base out, rounded bottom, then you can go again. I don't want to chase into that. What was the token I was talking about that we'd most like to see? Wow, isn't this trucker story been really interesting? And, and all the guys with the Bitcoin fixes this, there's some concerns with that whole uh, narrative. Yes, if you use a decentralized exchange and you do a lot of clever stuff, uh, governments like Canada essentially uh, blackballing um, various Bitcoin addresses can be circumvented. But... This whole nation state uh, involvement in crypto and stamping out who gets money, it's taken a little bit of the shine uh, on this. This is the one um, we'd all love to see win uh, a wee bit, and that is uh, Monero. And I wonder if 
It's, it's been an underperformer, it has to be said. Uh, outside of that 519 high, it's half-time oranges that never got anywhere closely back up. You had the fluffy pony story um, that came out that wasn't very helpful. A lot of people wondered um, if it had been compromised in some way, a lot of assurances given, etc. and dev work. We, who knows? Um, the truth be told. Uh, I do think you might run the risk of putting a flag on your head, but you'll also potentially get some privacy. It shouldn't be illegal to have um, uh, privacy in your tokens. And I'd like, in principle, for uh, Monero to actually do okay. Bit of a three impulse, always big bloated second impulse, uh, and now what you're happening to do. A little bit more of a hammer here. It seems just Again, one that might not go down as bad if you have to hold a crypto. Monero, Ripple, Bitcoin. And then, of course, for me, you want to be stable uh, generally. But that was it. Uh, partly because it didn't really get its second high. Ethereum made a marginally higher high, don't forget. So did Bitcoin at 69 versus the 64. These didn't get there. Um, so they've underperformed. But... Once they've underperformed, they may have a bit more latent potential for popping to the upside uh, and have a bit more zip. Uh, as a result, XRP was the legal case, the SEC, um, Monero, as I've already described. Uh, so you might get uh, some degree of actual benefit. But it's still too early, and I'm still suggesting defense. But at some point, this could have some real juicy reversal potential. A uh, lot of support areas, a lot of key levels from our historical analysis in and around these points, um, basing out, basing out. Maybe it finds its raison d'etre, or is truly appreciated for what it does, um, in the coming tyranny uh, that is seems to be everywhere. Um, good, good, good. So now, a couple of things, uh, if, as I say, I'm gonna just show you um, broadly that are of potential interest. So silver is, is something we are watching. Now, we have a concern about this uh, to the downside, potentially, although gold is broken to the upside and is its God's market. So we'll see if there is, if the short trade is to be saved, and it may well not be, so we positioned um, potentially badly here, uh, stops just above that. Uh, if we run through that, that is actually positive for gold and silver. Generally, gold and silver can do quite well when rates are, are rising, particularly when they're already very highly negative at the moment in terms of negative real rates. Um, you can actually do reasonably, uh, reasonably well with uh, the precious metals then, which is one of the reasons why have physical. I just had concern that that 22 level where we've lent on a lot volume by price could see a hard sell. We have out of the blue hard sells coming in here and structurally. So I don't want to cover too much of this. It's outside of the crypto realm. But were that to happen, um, you know, we could have, a, that, that could be a, a precursor to the deflation event. Not looking like it at the moment. But the big drivers, the big drivers that are real problems um, and uh, are similar in a way to Bitcoin dominance. Let me just go to that XRP dominance and get the gold silver ratio up. So why do I watch and why does it have bearing on crypto? Because if the gold silver ratio is going up, it's probably bearish for precious metals. Um, we had it, in fact, it was the inverted, uh, we had it on. Let's try one more time, get the right one. If you are having a situation where the gold-silver ratio is going up, it probably means precious metals are generally going down. At the moment, this is the inverted of the gold-silver ratio, by the way. And we expect this to break to the downside, which means up. So when the gold-silver ratio goes up, that means it's taking more silver ounces to buy gold. That means silver is underperforming gold. It is generally not a long-run affirmation for a precious bull market. When you have silver running at least as fast, preferably faster than gold, then you are in a better place. You are in a full-blown, the metals complex moving, um, going up. This is fear, the war talk, fear. Bonds aren't so safe anymore, less money running in, although some money definitely running back short term, I think, because of that war narrative, but certainly gold. Gold is strong. And, of course, oil has been pumped. And this is bad news generally for the consumer and the feel-good factor. So just talking again, why does this have relevance for crypto? Let's go back over here and get that oil on. 
um, because of inflation. Inflation is driving the death of the bond markets. Where does that money that is exiting go? So this is Brent oil. It's almost smashing a new high, guys. You take out that high over there, which is 96.74. You're at 96.29. You're, you're literally less than 50 cents from a new high and accelerating. Look at that hammer. There's three candles there that are building on and pointing to a new high. That is again highlighting the possibility of the war narrative. It's the great uh, uh, Rockefeller tax that is a global tax on all of us doing anything, including packaging. Everything you do has an oil element uh, in it from delivery right the way through to consumption. So this is uh, looking like it's going to pop out there, Brent particularly. Um, which is the slightly cleaner oil. So that's going to up inflation. That's going to put more pressure on the debt uh, generally. Broadly speaking, it puts a little bit of money back into the dollar that can sometimes give you a headwind. So of the fear currencies, dollar is one of them. You could argue Swiss franc is one of them. Hence why I mentioned the euro Swiss franc is spilling over again. Euro gets hammered when the dollar is going up because they are adversarial by relationship um, and typically uh, that is what's happening in the macro environment with this war. Now, inflation going up, debt then goes down. So what about that debt? TLT, let's show you that. So at the moment, this is the value of the 20 year. Now, we've suggested that this is a right shoulder on a far larger structure that is heading to the downside uh, over here. So that's loss of value. See the hammer and another hammer being made we think you're going to get a bit of a rally here. So that means the value of the debt will go up. That's typical of fear. So running to fear is the gold trade long, not the silver, because big hedge funds, countries, they will buy gold, not silver. Too much storage for the same amount of value uh, for silver. Much, much more space taken up, uh, weight, etc. Um, you want density and high value concentrated. Gold is that. Um, the bond trade is also it and you might also see a flow into dollars so people will buy the US debt rather than the Paraguayan debt for example uh, they might buy the Swiss debt rather than the Greek or the Portuguese debt um, so those are the decisions that are being made so this debt is likely to have a rally here because it's tested the neckline of this head and shoulders not yet ready to go so we bounce there but is it going to win in the long run Overall for me, no. Let's get that TNX up on this chart. So what are we going to be moving to? This is the 10-year debt. Now many of you are going, 10-year debt? I don't understand what that means. People sell and trade these instruments and they are then um, put out there. Hold on, let me just see, is this the one I want? Yeah, um, this has to run 2.17. We have a target for that. It's up at about 2. Point, uh, just shy of the 2.2 mark. So it's going to have a rest. Two shooting stars. First one a green, first a red. So this is the yield, how much it's paying. So when this goes up, the debt goes down in value. Yeah, and that was your special event of March 2020 where the debt went super high up in value and the yields dropped super low. So we're looking at the yield. Now we're talking about something moving in the opposite direction. But first a pause. Just like you saw that neckline and two hammers um, on the value, the value is going to go up and have a bounce, so the yield will go down a little bit and pull back. However, I'm here to tell you that there's a target up here and so far it's performed brilliantly and after pulling back it's likely to go up higher. That means that debt will come back down um, on the other chart that I was showing you, the TLT. So what does that all mean for you? Well, it means the debt markets long run are in trouble. So while you will get your bounce, um, so if I was drawing what happens next, you're going to get some form of a bounce. You might get quite high up for intent and purposes. Depends what's happening on the war narrative, but at some point you end up back down here. And then you let go of this key level of significance in a downside break. Um, and so far, the deflating of debt over here has not been particularly good period for Bitcoin. The money is not running into Bitcoin. That can flip in and change at some point when they go hyperinflationary and they go stimulus. That is going to uh, almost certainly uh, push all risk on assets again and you'll also see the stinky stoink market do okay as well in that environment um, but it's not something you want to um, allow to have happen excuse the noise in the background there um, 
So if I just look at the, the, the SP, people that think risk on is coming back into flavor, uh, I'm looking at the weekly and I'm here to tell you that it most certainly doesn't look like it to me. That is not positive. In fact, you could indeed be in a situation where you are uh, looking at a bit of a head and shoulders here with this particular jaw running like that. So you could technically have that, you could have this, you've had a bounce really hard and you've had a short one there and you're rolling. That would be most negative down, down and that bear in mind just because you have a target it's not the end. Head and shoulders have a built-in potential because they are reversal patterns over performance element. They don't just make target. The target should be first port of call before a bit of a rally potential but they can be cyclically an end of what was a long reflation period all the way from there. Don't forget, you're around about just above the 215s, call it 220, uh, call it 218, and you ran 480. It's quite a move, quite a doubler in two years. All on, you guessed it, funny money. That's right, funny money that's diluting you uh, and going to the likes of them. So overall, again, this is a risk on asset. It is not positive. Bear in mind, this is not the NASDAQ either. This is, you know, um, physical companies making stuff and doing things. And overall, that does not look healthy for further upside. It does look like the correction periods are here. And there is scope for um, what we call HVF method type jaws. And the right shoulder is more volatile than the more chilled left shoulder. It's exactly what you want to see in a head and shoulder. Um, so uh, what about the NDX? NDX. So it's fallen further. There's no talk of a head and shoulder here. And it is softening into that low. This is not typical bottoming trust structure, guys. So if that means risk off. And Bitcoin has done badly during this period. There's the November high for Bitcoin. There's uh, a skittish secondary high on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ was overperforming Bitcoin during that period, but you lower. Um, if it's what's not good for the NASDAQ, what's not good for the SPY, will not be generally, in most cases, on assumption, on balance of probability, in my personal opinion, given the macro is dominating the crypto cycle, Look at where that high occurred. It's November, guys. It's the same time that the 69 Bitcoin laser eyes, Max, Maximus, Maximus, and us thinking there's a good chance of the 84K being made until it's invalidated. Then we flipped. Um, all of that was happening. Everybody, big risk heroes during that period. Big risk heroes. And just as my uh, benchmark uh, for uh, risk here, as I'll talk about in a, in a second, we'll go to our, our friend Kathy Wood at the ARC. But I want to highlight broadening structure spill out of it. Dow Jones. This is spilling out of something that is broadening on an ascending structure. It's bearish for us. Um, what's, that's been in a bull market and that is bearish. It's a bearish candle. You don't, it's clearly a bearish candle and the overall structure is bearish. Um, so. 10-year yield, that was the jaw that I was looking for to show you we got 2.17 as a target. So whilst you might indeed pull back over here, so if you look at it weekly, you've got your shooting stars. Isn't that beautiful interim targets that tell you where you're going to have a rest and a pullback? How many of you get interim targets on the way to a full target that you emotionally expect to have happen, you're prepared for it, and you stand to, and you know where your stops are? I don't know. Maybe all of you do. In which case, I'd love to know what methods you use because I'm ready to learn and supplement mine. Dollar, back at 96. It's been as low as 95 and it's back up. So a little bit of the fear element in it. A little bit of a grind line. I'm not over convinced by, uh, by it. But on the macro time frame, in terms of what direction I think it will do in the big move, um, overall, we've continued to make our bull case for the dollar. Fear, not good for emerging currencies, not good for highly indebted currencies. Well, they all are, aren't they? But the big majors get the money and their debt markets get the money and, their, and the gold gets the money bought with dollars. So you have to acquire dollars to get that gold. Um, so that's a little bit of what's going on. Um, my uh, market sniper friends will be delighted to see the Euro Swiss franc doing an absolute spitter. We suggested that the spike made no sense and that it would likely fizzle at some point and so it is. Again, similar structure. 
pain on the euro, guys. This debt issue, this inflation issue, they have much higher gas costs, much, much higher than you're seeing when you look at the natural gas charts. Plus, they have carbon credits with corporates that have to buy carbon credits that are all pumping because you're punishing because you're not green enough, etc., etc. And they have this need um, for uh, everybody is in the Paris Accord in, in Europe and you've got to buy them. You've got to buy them to offset the damage you're doing to the planet. Hey, I'm, I'm all good for big corporates, not trashing the planet. But let's just say uh, this system, in an in time when you've created so much debt and there's now so much inflation and you're now adding additional cost as virtue signaling and do good. Hey, make them pay if they do damage. Um, but it's also not going to be seen as the smartest policy. And by the way, when you're hopelessly over indebted, um, and you're strangling every vehicle, making them less uh, equivalent. There's nine ships out there that apparently on that ocean generate more than all the cars in Europe in terms of <laughs> carbon released, uh, burning that distillate grease. Um, so anyway, that is a little bit about the global macro that you're getting educated on regarding your Bitcoin. This is the environment you are grimly clinging on to your Bitcoin in. And you need to understand that. NASDAQ looks weak. Uh, Dow looks weak. Debt markets, short-term rally, but looks weak and has not been good for you. So a short-term rally here yeah, could be possible and everyone will go, oh, you're wrong again. Don't be chasing and commenting on the most recent next short-term move. Understand where you are. This marginally higher high was a negative for Bitcoin and has done damage. And there's very few tokens <laughs> apart from stable coins where you can hide and that unfortunately includes you um, as well for those that actually believe that are going to be totally counter cyclical uh, after all that sacrificing I'm afraid you can still <laughs> go down um, and that's not a slur on anybody okay guys that's it uh, the crypto sniper don't forget you can be in the room with us we'll do advanced techniques you'll have to have watched all the basic and intermediate content that we've recorded there's a lot of it there's case studies there's tests at the end that you need to answer you need to get a minimum pass mark um, we take it seriously that you want to learn and grow and become better so this is not a half-assed decision you should make. There's a call. You can find out information and details, and you can decide whether you want to meet with us in person and have a look at the bottlenecks uh, and have a chat with us off record. Um, it'll be great to see you. But remember, um, we are not a trade feed, although we discuss trade setups all the time. Um, we are a learning environment. We want to see you grow. You should take responsibility for managing your own money and make your own decisions. Execute for yourself. We will not be doing it for you. We will often tell you what we are doing on a non-advisory only basis. Okay, uh, great to check in with you on crypto. The links are all below. You should, by the way, just on that comment, should have some uh, gold and silver in your portfolio. You should potentially have a cashback card, but don't stake and buy anything that's going down right now. Prepare for it. Links are uh, below. You can internet buy bullion until you're ready to take phys physical amounts. Um, you know the risks in that inherently, but it is backed. You can reserve bars with serial numbers, bullion vault, link below. Um, and then once you reach a certain scale, you can sell out of it and put that ch chunk of change into physical that you have delivered, uh, safely kept off grid, and your name, Midnight Gardening, whatever you do. Then you have your crypto and other aspects. Remember that. And you should contemplate purchasing property or being ready to purchase property debt-free, ideally if you can, or building the wealth so that you can uh, in an environment where asset prices are likely to be dunked. If we turn out to be correct, a deflationary event is coming on the, uh, this way. And the charts certainly seem to feel like that. There's no enthusiasm for chasing in right now. Okay, thank you so much for uh, watching. We appreciate shares, our highest currency. Uh, we call them smears. And you can also give us puppy licks. That's great stuff for us. Uh, and we'll continue to try to give you the best upside on how we are feeling and what we're seeing in the markets. Bye for now.